with my friend felt like a fresh start, but I couldn't shake the feeling that my troubles were far from over. I kept the details about Spectre to myself, telling Melinda only that I was dealing with someone who was bothering me online. I didn't want her to think I was losing my mind or being overly dramatic. Still, she noticed the dark circles under my eyes and how I flinched at every little sound, so she gave me some space, hoping I would eventually feel at ease. I tried to reassure myself that Spectre wouldn't be able to find me here, but that comforting thought was shattered just three days later. I woke up early to discover a new email waiting for me, with no sender information, just an empty field where the address should have been. The subject line sent a shiver through me. Good morning. I found myself hesitating, staring at the screen and weighing my options, but my curiosity ultimately won out. The message was brief, just a few chilling words. Spectre. Still think you can hide? An email arrived with a photo attached, and as I opened it, a chill ran down my spine. The image showed Melinda's house from the outside, captured in the dim light just before dawn. I could see the curtains of my room pulled back, a soft glow emanating from within, which I recognized as the light I had left on all night, too anxious to face the darkness. I hurried to rouse Melinda, my thoughts racing with urgency. We need to call the police, I whispered, trying to keep my voice steady despite the panic rising within me. Melinda, still half asleep, blinked at me in confusion. What's happening? I quickly showed her the email and I watched as her complexion drained of color. How did they find you here? You haven't told anyone, right? I assured her with a nod. No one. Not a single person. Later that day, the police arrived to take our statement, but their skepticism was palpable. Are you sure this isn't just a prank? One officer questioned, suggesting it might be a friend playing a joke. My frustration bubbled over as I insisted. I've told you, this isn't a joke. Someone is watching us and they know things they shouldn't. They assured me they would look into it, but I could sense their lack of seriousness. Once they were gone, Melinda and I took matters into our own hands to enhance our security. We set up cameras, changed the locks, and meticulously checked every window and door. For several nights, everything seemed peaceful, perhaps too peaceful. Then, one night, as I was trying to drift off to sleep, I heard it. A gentle tapping sound. I froze, my heart racing. It appeared to be coming from outside my window. Tap. 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 I cautiously got out of bed, grabbed the baseball bat I had started keeping nearby and moved toward the window. I lifted the curtain just a bit and looked outside. There was nothing there, just the dark street and the faint light of a distant lamp. Just as I was about to exhale in relief, the tapping resumed, this time louder and more urgent. A chill ran through me as I realized the sound wasn't from outside. It was coming from within the room. I turned quickly, my gaze darting to the dimly lit corners of the room, and there it was, a vague silhouette lurking in the shadows. I swung the bat frantically, but it only sliced through empty space. The figure melted away into the darkness as if it had never existed. My heart raced pounding loudly in my ears. I flicked on the light, revealing an empty room. Melinda burst in, her voice filled with concern as she asked what was wrong. I struggled to find my words, my breaths coming in quick, shallow bursts. There's someone in the house, I finally managed to say. I saw them. Without hesitation, Melinda grabbed her phone and called 911. As we waited for the police, the atmosphere in the house grew colder. The shadows seemed to stretch, and the walls felt like they were closing in on us. I could hear soft whispers, as if someone was speaking from beyond the wall, but the words eluded me. When the police arrived, they thoroughly searched the house but found nothing, no signs of forced entry, no trace of anyone else. Afterward, Melinda's fear became palpable. She suggested it might be best for me to find somewhere else to stay. I understood her concern. I was starting to feel like a living nightmare and I could see the dread reflected in her eyes. That evening, I logged into Discord for the first time since moving in with Melinda, my heart pounding with anticipation. As I clicked the icon, I braced myself for what awaited me, 
And sure enough, there it was. A new message from Spectre. The chilling words read, You can't escape me. I attempted to block them once more, but the option was unresponsive this time. I was powerless to delete the message or even report it. Soon, a deluge of messages began to pour in, each one echoing the same ominous phrase until my computer finally crashed under the weight of it all. In a panic, I yanked the power cord from the wall, my breath coming in quick gasps. This felt far more sinister than mere harassment. It was something much darker. Reaching for my phone to call Melinda, I noticed a new notification from an unknown number. It was a photo taken from outside Melinda's house, showing me standing at the window, bat in hand. My hands trembled as I read the chilling message. I'm closer than you think. Just then, a video began to play, revealing a live feed of my room from mere moments ago, where I stood paralyzed, gazing out the window. The footage captured a shadowy figure creeping up behind me, inching closer until it was almost touching my back. Suddenly, the screen went dark, and a final chilling command appeared. Spectre. Turn around. I whipped around, but the room was empty. The window was ajar, the curtains dancing in the wind. I retreated from the room, my mind racing with disbelief. How could someone be in two places at once? How could they anticipate my every move? Then it dawned on me, the cameras we had set up. I hurried to review the footage, my heart pounding, aware that if I didn't uncover something, sleep would elude me forever. As the video played, I caught glimpses of the dark figure, flickering like a glitch, trailing through the rooms, always just out of reach, always a step behind. The final frame revealed the figure standing at my bedroom window, staring straight into the camera. Its face was a blur, distorted, yet its eyes were unmistakably mine. I screamed and turned off the monitor, realizing there was nowhere left to escape, nowhere to hide. Spectre was no longer just an anonymous presence lurking in the shadows. Spectre was me, or perhaps I was them. The most terrifying realization? I had no clue which of us was the real one. The incessant notifications from Discord had woven themselves into the very fabric of my daily existence. Each hour, each minute, Spectre was a constant presence, sending messages that felt increasingly personal and intrusive, probing into the hidden corners of my life that I had kept locked away, even from myself. One fateful night, the tension reached a breaking point. I found myself at my desk, eyes glued to the screen, fingers trembling just above the keys. The room was cloaked in darkness, illuminated only by the soft blue light of my monitor. Outside, the night was eerily quiet, but within my mind, chaos reigned. Suddenly, the notification sound broke through the silence. Spectre. Are you ready for the next level? My heart raced and I remained silent, feeling an unsettling sensation of being observed. I instinctively turned to look behind me, half expecting to see a lurking figure, but the shadows revealed nothing but the empty space of my room. As I faced the screen again, another message appeared. Spectre. Nice hoodie. It's your favorite, isn't it? A chill ran down my spine as I glanced down at my beloved black hoodie. How could they possibly know? A wave of fear washed over me as I realized the unsettling possibility that I had been under their watchful eye all along. I forcefully closed my laptop and quickly reached for my phone to message my best friend, Alex, feeling the urgent need for someone to confide in and bring me back to reality. Just as I was about to send the text, a notification from Discord caught my attention, revealing a voice message waiting for me. My hand trembled as I hit play and a chilling, distorted whisper echoed in the room saying, I see you. I'm closer than you think. In a panic, I dropped my phone, my heart racing, and hurried to check every lock in my apartment. The front door was secure and the windows were shut tight, yet the shadows around me seemed to twist and move, as if something unseen lurked nearby. Fear took hold, and my breath quickened as the space around me felt increasingly constricting. Suddenly, another message came through. Spectre. Running won't help. You'll never escape. I stood frozen, my hands shaking, 
bewildered by how they knew I had shifted to a different room. I reached for my phone again, but just then the lights flickered and went out, plunging me into darkness, with only the dim light from my laptop illuminating the space. I cautiously approached it, my heart pounding, and opened the screen to find a new message waiting. Spectre. Look outside your window. A shiver ran down my spine, making me acutely aware of the stillness around me. My gaze instinctively moved to the window, where the curtains were tightly closed. I felt a lump form in my throat as I took a deep breath. With a trembling hand, I reached out to the curtain, my fingers lightly grazing the fabric. I paused, my heart racing so loudly that it echoed in my ears. In one swift motion, I pulled the curtain aside, only to find nothing but the quiet street illuminated by the faint glow of the streetlights. I let out a sigh of relief, but that moment was short-lived when I received another message. Spectre. Too slow. I'm already inside. Inside? Panic surged through me as I spun around, desperately searching the room for any sign of an intruder. My breath quickened, and I scrambled for something to defend myself. I seized a lamp, gripping it tightly like a makeshift weapon, and backed into a corner, my eyes scanning the shadows. My fingers trembled as I typed back, Who are you? What do you want from me? For a brief moment, silence hung in the air, but then another message appeared. Spectre, I want to play a game. A game? What kind of twisted game was this? Before I could process it, another message flashed on the screen. Spectre, I've left you a clue. Find it before it's too late. A clue? My heart raced as I searched the room for anything unusual, and then I spotted it. An envelope on my desk that hadn't been there moments before. My hands shook as I reached for the envelope, tearing it open to reveal a single sheet of paper. Bold black letters stared back at me. Go to the basement. A wave of dread washed over me. The basement of my old building was a dark, eerie place that I had always avoided. Now it felt like I had no option but to confront it. I grabbed my phone for illumination and cautiously stepped out of my apartment, making my way down the creaky staircase toward the basement door. Each step seemed to stretch on forever, my footsteps reverberating in the stillness of the building. The basement door loomed ahead, and with a trembling hand, I turned the handle and pushed it open. A rush of cold, damp air enveloped me, sending chills down my spine. I began to descend the narrow staircase the light from my phone barely cutting through the oppressive darkness. Just as I reached the halfway point, my phone buzzed again, revealing a new message. Spectre, welcome to my world. Out of nowhere, the light from my phone flickered and then went out completely, plunging the basement into total darkness. I was surrounded by an overwhelming blackness that made my heart race with fear. As panic began to rise, I reached out to find the railing, desperately trying to steady myself. The silence was almost unbearable until I heard it. Footsteps. They were slow and purposeful, drawing nearer with each passing moment. I held my breath, frozen in place, my mind racing with questions. Was this some kind of trick? Was there truly someone lurking in the shadows with me? The footsteps halted just behind me, and I could sense a chilling presence, a cold breath brushing against my neck. Then, a whisper pierced the stillness. Game over. I spun around, swinging my phone in a frantic arc, but there was nothing there, just the oppressive darkness. I hurriedly scrambled up the stairs, my heart pounding, nearly stumbling over my own feet in my haste. I slammed the door shut and locked it, gasping for breath. Back in my apartment, I received one final message for the night. Spectre, you think you're safe? Think again. Part three is coming and I'm just getting started. The screen went dark and though my room was quiet, I felt a sense of dread. This was far from finished. To be continued in part three. Will I ever discover the true identity of Spectre or am I ensnared in a game I cannot escape? Stay tuned for part three as the terror continues. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share your thoughts in the comments. 
Who do you believe Spectre is and what are their intentions? Your insights might just be my lifeline. <laughs>